All right, we're back. Let's uh, let's go start looking for Liara after I talk to Engineer Adams. Hey, Commander, you know that quarry in Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. Not a problem? I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You got an eye for Talley, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. I'm sure he doesn't have a crush on Tally. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. She's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Sounds good. Fill me in on the IES stealth systems. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up, unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. Oh shit. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. Awesome. So, how about you, Adams? Where else have you served, Adams? If you name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo, only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. All right, let's set out. Make our slow ascent back up. Oh, there's that interesting wall again. Ask me why that amuses me, it just does. Okay, nothing's here. Just different layers of nothing. Let's hit up the R's dig site. Uh, shit, hold on. Did it say exactly where? message from Alliance Command coming in. I'll patch it through. Okay. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. We've got a situation here and you're the only one that can handle it. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills 
is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Really? Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware, and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. Um, is that the only option? Can't you disable it remotely? Our fail safes aren't responding. The VI operates on a closed network. It can't affect any external systems, but we don't have any direct access to its processes. We could bomb it from orbit, but the damage to the facility would be catastrophic. We'd prefer to have someone shut down the core. Someone like you. I know Spectre's answer the council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facility's weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Okay. Yeah, that's literally what he just asked for, turning it off and on. He didn't really tell me where to go either. Okay. No mention of Prothean Ruins. Commander, I'm picking up a signal from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. Um, okay, let's hit it. Um, let's go with the boys. See how dropping this thing from the upper atmosphere is any better than just getting a little bit closer to the ground. Distress signal.
Oh, we saw him on the Citadel. Okay. Just lead the way. Off we go. Uh, map. Might as well just hit this anomaly. Before we get the hell out of here. No more Thresher mods, please. No more. Solarian. Okay. Galaxy map. I think we covered all the planets in this sector. Yeah. Check it out. Hopefully not fall in the lava. I'd rather not Anakin Skywalker myself. Um Okay, so um. Jesus. This thing is not great for controlling. Take the high ground. <laughs> Everything seems pretty flat. Wait, something still. There we go. I thought it was dead. Oh 
boy. Shit. Only a fool punches a gnat back in the mouth. We should sneak around and pull its tail. That would be an option, Rat Rex, if I could easily control this fucking thing. Guns, I don't think so. Nope, let's check out the other portions of the base right quick. Empty. Excuse me. Move. God damn it. Always in the way. Right, so two portions here. Same gatehouse as before. With an upgrade kit. I gotta love how awkwardly Shepard runs. Like, like this jogging here. It just looks so stiff. Okay, back we go. Back, back to the car. Oh, there are three. There are three. Does the map dictate I go? Am I facing the correct way? This way? Let's check. Yep, okay, we're good. Don't run it over. Let's 
<laughs> oh great, they have the high ground. Garrus, my boy. The shepherd force, dear lord. Yo, I think we're clear. I used to move 
up. Not now, Shimmer. I didn't want to talk right now. I was trying to sprint, goddammit. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay. Shields are good. Okay, lovely. I don't have my tank and the game throws this at me. Get up, buddy. Let's have you switch to a sniper. Try to get that sniper up there. There we go. Patching you up. Get up, big man. Okay. Where are you hiding? I know you're here somewhere. I see you on my map. What the f- really? Hold on. Dick. Area secure. 
secure. All right, boys. Down we go. Okay. Oh. Be on guard. Let's uh let's switch to rifles. Yeah, everybody's on rifle. Shit. Way to give away your position, Geth. To the abyss. Nothing here is white or sterile. Are you okay? What happened to you? Listen, this thing I'm in is a Prothean security device. I cannot move, so I need you to get me out of it, all right? Uh, you're trapped? How'd you end up in there? I was exploring the ruins when the Geth showed up, so I hid in here. Can you believe that? Geth, beyond the veil! I activated the tower's defenses. I knew the barrier curtains would keep them out. When I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to. I was trapped in here. You must get me out, please. Your mother is working with Saren. Whose side are you on? What? I am not on anybody's side. I may be Benezia's daughter, but I am nothing like her. I have not spoken to her in years. Please, just get me out of here. All right. Uh, the qu nope, same questions. We just need to figure some way past this energy field. It's a Prothean barrier curtain. I knew it would keep me safe from the Geth. When I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to. I was trapped in here. You must get me out, please. Relax, we'll get you out. We'll find some way to help you. There is a control in here that should deactivate this thing. You'll have to find some way past the barrier curtain. That's the tricky part. The defenses cannot be shut off from the outside. I don't know how you'll get in here. Be careful. There is a Krogan with the Geth. They have been trying different ways to get past the barrier. Okay. Uh, no, she... For this game, yes, but Tally is my woman of choice for the others. Okay. 
You two give me cover and fire? Alright, is that- nope, there's more gas. Oh god! I want to make sure this is cleared out. Up and upgrade scram rail. Okay. I think we're good. So we should be good to move. you get in here? I didn't think there was any way past the barrier. We have to get you out of here before more Geth arrive. Yes, you're right. I've seen enough of them to last a lifetime. That button should shut down my containment field. Any idea how we get out of this place? There is an elevator back in the center of the tower. At least I, I think it's an elevator. It should take us out of here. Come on! I, I still cannot believe all this. Why would the Geth come after me? Do you think Benezia is involved? Saren's looking for the conduit. You're a Prothean expert. Obviously he wants you to help him find it. The conduit? But I don't know... That. These ruins are not stable. That mining laser must have triggered a seismic event. We have to hurry. The whole place is caving in. Joker, get the Normandy airborne and lock in on my signal. On the double, mister. Aye, aye, Commander. Secure and away. ETA eight minutes. If I die in here, I'll kill him. I love that. Just, if I die, I will kill you. Oh, God. In case you didn't notice, this place is falling apart. Exhilarating, isn't it? Thanks for getting rid of those energy fields for us. Had the doctor over. Whatever it is you want, you are not getting it from me. Is this really the time? The atmosphere is perfect for our life and death struggle. Kill them. Spare the Asari if you can. If not, doesn't matter. This is like, the atmosphere is perfect. Doesn't matter if we're actually all about to die. Boys, a big 
flank around. Rogan's dead. Okay, that was a close call. Too close, Commander. Ten more seconds we would have been swimming in molten sulfur. The Normandy isn't equipped to land in exploding volcanoes. They tend to fry our sensors and melt our hull. Just for future reference. We almost died out there and your pilot is making jokes? Joker pulled our asses out of there. I think he's earned the right to a few bad jokes. I see. It must be a human thing. I don't have a lot of experience dealing with your species, Commander. But I am grateful to you. You saved my life back there, and not just from the volcano. Those Geth would have killed me or dragged me off to Saren. What did Saren want with you? Do you know something about the Conduit? Only that it was somehow connected to the Prothean extinction. That is my real area of expertise. I have spent the past 50 years trying to figure out what happened to them. 50 years? How old are you exactly? I hate to admit it, but I am only 106. Damn! I hope I look that good when I'm your age. A century may seem like a long time to a short-lived species like yours. But among the Asari, I am barely considered more than a child. That is why my research has not received the attention it deserves. Because of my youth, other Asari scholars tend to dismiss my theories on what happened to the Protheans. I've got my own theory on why the Protheans disappeared. With all due respect, Commander, I have heard every theory out there. The problem is finding evidence to support them. The Protheans left remarkably little behind. It is almost as if someone did not want the mystery solved. It is like someone came along after the Protheans were gone and cleansed the galaxy of clues. But here is the incredible part. According to my findings, the Protheans were not the first galactic civilization to mysteriously vanish. This cycle began long before them. How do you know? Where do you come up with this theory? I thought there wasn't any evidence. I have been working on this for 50 years. I have tracked down every scrap and shred of evidence. Eventually, subtle patterns start to emerge. Patterns that hint at the truth. It is difficult to explain to someone else. I cannot point to one specific thing to prove my case. It is more a feeling derived from a half century of dedicated research. But I know I'm right. And eventually, I will be able to prove it. There were other civilizations before the Protheans. This cycle has repeated itself many times over. If the Protheans weren't the first, then who was? I don't know. There is barely any evidence on the Protheans, even less on those who came before them. I cannot prove my theory, but I know I am right. The galaxy is built on a cycle of extinction. Each time a great civilization rises up, it is suddenly and violently cast down. Only ruins survive. The Protheans rose up from a single world until their empire spanned the entire galaxy. Yet even they climbed to the top on the remains of those who came before. Their greatest achievements, the mass relays and the citadel, are based on the technology of those who came before them. And then, like all the other forgotten civilizations throughout galactic history, the Protheans disappeared. I have dedicated my life to figuring out why. Well, I think I can help you with that. They were wiped out by a race of sentient machines. The Reapers. The... the Reapers? But I have never heard of... How do you know this? What evidence do you have? 
uh, the beacon on Eden Prime. There was a damaged Prothean beacon on Eden Prime. It burned a vision into my brain. I'm still trying to sort out what it all means. Visions? Yes, that makes sense. The beacons were designed to transmit information directly into the mind of the user. Finding one that still works is extremely rare. No wonder the Geth attacked Eden Prime. The chance to acquire a working beacon, even a badly damaged one, is worth almost any risk. But the beacons were only programmed to interact with Prothean physiology. Whatever information you received would have been confused, unclear. I am amazed you were able to make sense of it at all. A lesser mind would have been utterly destroyed by the process. You must be remarkably strong-willed, Commander. Okay, this isn't helping us find Saren or the Conduit. Of course, you're right. I am sorry, my scientific curiosity got the better of me. Unfortunately, I do not have any information that could help you find the Conduit or Saren. Uh, but you can still help us. I don't know why Saren wanted you out of the picture, but I think we'll be a lot better off if we bring you along. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Commander. Saren might come after me again. I cannot think of anywhere safer than here on your ship. And my knowledge of the Protheans might be useful later on. And her bionics will come in handy when the fighting starts. Oh, definitely. Welcome aboard. Good to have you on the team, Liara. Thank you, Commander. I am very grateful. Oh, I am afraid I am feeling a bit lightheaded. When was the last time you ate? Or slept? Dr. Chakwa should take a look at you. It is probably just mental exhaustion, coupled with the shock of discovering the Prothean's true fate. I need some time to process all this. Still, it could not hurt to be examined by a medical professional. It will give me the chance to think things over. Are we finished here, Commander? Yep. We can talk again after you've seen the doctor. The rest of you, dismissed. Mission reports are filed, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Sure, why not? Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. We've received your report, Commander. I understand Dr. Tassoni is on the Normandy. I assume you're taking the necessary security precautions. Liera's on our side. The Geth were trying to kill her. Benezia would never allow Saren to kill her daughter. Maybe she doesn't know. Or maybe we don't know her. We never expected she could become a traitor. At least the mission was a success. Apart from the utter destruction of a major Prothean ruin. Was that really necessary, Shepard? The Geth were crawling all over those ruins. We were lucky to make it out alive. Of course, Commander. The mission must always take priority. Good luck, Commander. Remember, we are all counting on you. The Turian Counselor really doesn't like us, does he? <laughs> oh, okay. Got all messed up and stuck. What's this? Let's talk to Joker. We haven't talked to Joker in a bit. Joker, buddy. How you doing? Uh, I prefer gold to silver, you know, for my metal. <laughs> I figured you'd recommend me for one since I, uh, hold your boots out of the fire. If we present you with a medal, you'll end up sitting on stage listening to politicians make speeches for a couple of hours. Fun, fun. That's a good point. They'd probably make me shave, too. I spent the last seven weeks working on this baby. No medal's worth that. So, Commander, why don't you tell me why you're really here? Well, how's the ship? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. Oh, I know. All right, let's talk. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class Relax. in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. No. Nope. Okay, I've got Vrolich syndrome. Brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. 
Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic. But I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. Makes sense. Don't ask Shepard to dance either. Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. <laughs> I was just thinking how much you remind me of Santa Claus. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, and it stuck. Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. Okay. I need to know more about this Brolic Syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures. Hip, thighs, ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. You're not gonna break a bone trying to fly the ship, are you? Uh, I don't fly with my feet, Commander. So I'm fine as long as I'm in this chair. I gotta be real careful when I get up to take a piss, though. I can do my job as well as anyone on the ship. Better, actually. So don't worry about it. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Commander. Uh, what is personal? How'd you end up joining the Alliance? Look, if you're looking for an inspirational tale of the crippled kid overcoming impossible odds, you're gonna be disappointed. My mother was a civilian contractor working for the Alliance. I basically grew up on the Arcturus station back when they were building up the fleets. Spend all that time around Alliance ships, there's a good chance you'll end up going to the Academy. That makes sense, alright. I have to go. Alright, see ya. Oh, shit. Just launched myself straight into his console. Alright, let's go talk to Liara. See what she knows about her mother, at least. Doing, Doc? Let's have a chat. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. She is indeed the best. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... Yeah, just doing my job, don't mention it. I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me, they do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Okay, so... Sorry, Culture, let, let's start with the important stuff. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. I doubt that. This hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Benezia in many years, but I know her, and this was not like her. Something changed. Uh, okay, Asari culture? I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? 
Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. Okay, that's disgusting. No. How is that possible? Explain. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits on to our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. And what about the other parent? What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. You Asari live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. Uh... They're a hive... No, they're not a fucking hive mind. I've heard that theory before and it just doesn't make sense because they think too differently from each other for that to be possible uh, I mean whether you consider it creepy or not okay but nah come on do you know who matriarch Benezia chose as her partner she rarely spoke of her partner though I know my father if you want to use that term was another Asari Venezia never told you her partner's name? Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pureblood. Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face. It is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Well, that's fucking terrible. Uh, but you don't know that. Maybe she wanted to meet you, but couldn't. Something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. Okay, that's it. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. And he said the line. <laughs> All right, Caden. I like to talk to everybody. Do do rounds. Anything you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? Doctor Tassoni. Seems like a sweet girl. Easy on the eyes. I mean, if you like the bookish sort. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, Lieutenant. I saw her first. Only by a few seconds, sir. Right. Well, no, more like a couple of an hour or so. Or, no, a couple of minutes. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Is this an official evaluation, Commander? Or off the record? Speak freely. Elenko, when it's just you and me, you can consider it off the record. That's a generous attitude. Okay. I think there's something wrong with all this. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction. But we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. 
There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. Oh, I understand. The Council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back no, in No, you're, you're good. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, all dead is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. <laughs> there are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Oh, most certainly. Jesus Christ. Uh... You doubt it was accidental? What's the survival rate? Damn corporations! <laughs> Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. Bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Oh, that sounds terrifying. Um, friends, intentional exposures. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Yeah, it, it makes sense to think so. And knowing the way corporations work, probably did. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet. To prevent leaks. Time to talk, uh, then. Time to get physical, then. <laughs> then you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bowl every night after dinner, play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich, but she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful. But not stuck up about it. I think you'd have liked her. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Or maybe she felt the same. But things never felt together. Training, you know. Shit happens, yeah. Um. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. Right. See you, Victorious. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. But that's my own baggage, Commander. No bearing on this. Well, you can talk to me about Alenko, it. Alenko, there's no regulation that says you can't be friends with your commander. I appreciate that, commander. I just don't want you to think that I'm a, a whiner. Besides, I've got my past squared away. All right, sounds good. Let's check out the office right quick. Uh, sparse. Thanks, man. You too. I do want to fix the weapons for everybody too. I'd rather see if everybody's... How's everybody settling in? So... We've got Saren on the run. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good? He's rotten. To the core. 
I could tell as soon as I met him. You knew him? Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What was he doing? What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. I mean, I understand. Uh, what's the cargo? What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. Whose ship was it? There was a Polis trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Shit. Every damn one. Damn. Alright. So long, Rex. Yeah, I can see why you didn't say anything before. Ashley? Commander, you have a minute to talk. Sure, what about? I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? You don't trust their motives because they're not human. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. Yeah, that's That's enough, Chief. You always second-guess your superiors? Sir! No, sir. I'm sorry, I was out of line. I'll get back to my duties, Commander. Alright, well, we set her straight. <laughs> Commander, how are you? I'm alright. I gotta go. Commander. I'll talk to him about T-Sec later. See how Tally's doing. Tally, girl. Hello, Shepard. You all right? Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? Too quiet for you to sleep? The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have until it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. 
always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. I mean, maybe. What about you? You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. I agree. All right. I should go. See, See you later. Tablet. Wait, what? Okay. Well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the Empire, I thank you so very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. If you're on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe on Twitch. Drop me a follow if you haven't already. And I will be back next time.